In this series of videos you will see how to create light and strong body parts of complex shape. From a photograph or sketch to a finished metal coated composite part. In this video we will look at how to make a composite reinforcement with the carbon fiber of the part we printed last time. Likes and comments below and we begin. In the last video we covered how to print large body parts quickly and cheaply. Previous episodes of this playlist have detailed several ways you can use composite reinforcement and 3D printing. You can print molds on the printer, laminate parts made of fiberglass, carbon fiber or Kevlar on them and then separate the composite parts from the mold. In short, this method gives us a gain in the weight of the final part but greatly complicates and increases the cost of the manufacturing process and besides, it doesn't allow to achieve the highest quality detailing of the outer layer, since the front surface becomes a secondary imprint from the mold. But now we are interested in reinforcement technology without a mold at all, when we have a thin matrix that will be the first layer of our product. Usually vacuum technique is used for the best quality laminating, but many of you in the comments under previous videos mentioned that it is not always possible to get a vacuum pump. Therefore, I will show you how to strengthen the part with the composite without a vacuum pump, valves and bags. Instead of vacuum pump we buy kinetic sand. This math, which consists of 2% polymeric materials, for the remaining 98% pure sand and to touch something between ordinary sand and plasticine. Such sand easily accepts and holds a molded shape and we will use it as a support for the part during lamination. The choice of reinforcement materials depends on the purpose of the part. If the task is to make the part as light as possible, use carbon fiber. For maximum reinforcement up to bulletproof protection class, use Kevlar. Fiberglass, in turn, is the most affordable material but inferior in terms of weight and strength. The topic of strength is described in as much detail as possible in part 4 of our series. In this case I use carbon fiber because I want to evaluate how light parts can be made using this technology. The best choice is carbon fiber with 2 and 2 twelve type because it is lighter than the standard plane takes complex shapes. We measure and cut the sheets of the required size with a margin of couple of centimeters along the edges. Note that in order to maintain sufficient fracture strength in all directions, the second layer we rotate at 45 degrees. Weight the cut carbon fiber sheets and then mix the same amount of structural epoxy and hardener by weight. Degrease the part with a solvent or alcohol laid on a substrate of kinetic sand and proceed to lamination. Carefully apply epoxy to the inside of the part paying special attention to the corners so that there are not empty spaces left in them. Then lay the first layer of carbon fiber distributing the fabric with hands and brush so that it repeats the shape of the part as accurately as possible, also paying particular attention to corners and edges. According to the same technique we lay the required number of layers and on top we cover the layers with a peel ply and cling film. Kinetic sand can also be poured onto the film for a denser lamination. After the resin has completely cured, we get a light and durable part. Before cutting off the excess parts of the carbon fiber, I recommend cover the edges with masking tape because uh, long fibers may catch on the shaft or cut off wheel. It should also be taken into account that carbon fiber is an excellent conductor and if its trimmings get inside the motor of the grinder then it will burn out. Therefore it is better to use a flexible shaft and hang the machine away from the cutting point. Do not forget about your own safety as carbon fiber trims do not have any beneficial effect either on the skin or on the respiratory system. Ideally bring the hood or pipe of a vacuum cleaner with a homemade cyclone directly to the workplace. Use big cutting discs for straighter and smoother lines and smaller discs for tighter curves. Now we also add the rest of the necessary slots because based on previous experiments if you make cuts at this stage they are obtained much more accurately than if you print the part with slot initially. As a result, we get a part that even before the slots weighs only 66 grams, has a thickness of 2.5 mm and at the same time, based on the tests, 
has a strength that not achievable when printing with any materials to obtain the same wall thickness and weight. The choice of composite materials and the number of layers will depend on the application of your part, but the main thing is that the technology remains the same simple regardless of the required strength and number of layers. If this video was useful for you, click the like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next important video in which we will prepare this part for applying a metal layer. Good luck with your own projects and see you soon!